everyone. Uh, <clears throat> nice to see you on day five. Um, and I would like to zoom out a little bit. So um, Christine and Hannah already presented all the very practical things which are in these two EU programs. So, but what is the bigger frame? What is the um, uh, overarching uh, policy? So you might have heard that there is an inclusion and diversity strategy. And let me share that and walk you through it. Um, this is a presentation I uh, kindly, uh, with her permission, borrowed from uh, Marta from the Commission. So we work closely together uh, with also our colleagues in the European Commission, because yeah, it's only together that we can run this program as well as possible and make it as inclusive as possible. So uh, we are also very happy that even on the policy level, together with uh, the member states and the Commission, there is this wish to make this program very accessible. It should be there for all. If you remember my uh, speech on the first day, um, it is not only for the well-off, uh, big smile, Colgate smile, uh, middle class, white students in big cities. It's also for all the rest and we should uh, reach out to them. And I think throughout the week, we have heard different speakers to actually give you ideas on how to do that. Yeah. Voila. <clears throat> there are going to be four very important transversal priorities in the new programs. This means the EU programs for youth. So within Erasmus Plus, there is a possibility uh, to have youth projects and then the um, European Solidarity Corps is specifically also for the youth sector. As you can see, circle pair inclusion and accessibility is a big priority. But just to give you the full picture, also um, green Erasmus, so the environmentally sustainable idea behind the program uh, is important. Um, after Corona, we probably see that uh, digital is one thing that we need to uh, bring forward as well. And the programs could help with that, like we're doing uh, today, for example. Um, using all these digital tools and, and uh, improving our digital skills with these programs and then active participation. And I think that was also the message throughout uh, this week, nothing about them without them. Yeah, so involve all the young people in your uh, projects. So what is in this inclusion and diversity strategy, or they sometimes call it the implementation guidelines, yeah, when it comes to ID, yeah, inclusion, diversity. It is quite good that we have a definition and an explanation of what we're talking about. Yeah. Hannah already uh, shortly mentioned it. On my next slide, I'll uh, go through it uh, again. But um, this is not only valid for the youth sector, but also for the other Erasmus Plus sectors. So um, it's a, a European approach that young people, wherever they are, whether they're in formal education, whether they're in uh, adult uh, education or uh, 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 vocational training, or in our youth sector, we're talking about the same uh, kind of target group. It also details the program mechanisms that are there to support, and uh, Hannah and Christine already explained uh, you those, so I won't repeat uh, them, but then also what it takes from different stakeholders to make inclusion and diversity even better than it is today already. So the definition actually also in the formal education, they now adopted sort of the definition that we had in the youth field. So that's sort of recognition of all the things we've been doing uh, in our sector. And as I said, also in the first uh, uh, day, people with fewer opportunities is those who have barriers to um, having access to these opportunities that are there for them. Yeah. And then you have all these different uh, categories. Um, Within the strategic partnership on inclusion, we are focusing on specific of these categories like the disabilities and health conditions. So that's why also in this week we had a day focusing on that. Um, then barriers linked to education, but also maybe economic uh, situation like all the young people who are not in education, employment and training. So how to reach out and create uh, new paths for them. Um, and then geographical barriers like yeah, not everything is happening in the big uh, city. So what about rural youth? How can we bring all the opportunities all the way to the, the small villages, the small islands, etc., which are far away from the, the, the centers of the, the, the countries? Now, 
<clears throat> the main part, and I think the most interesting part is who should be doing what in order to make it happen. Yeah. And um, within after consultations with the field, um, these were some of the ideas that if we want to make this a success, inclusion and diversity, then youth organizations, so meaning many of you who are here, um, also need to do something or could contribute something. The first thing is networking and capacity building. Some of you are very experienced in um, working with specific target groups, but we would also like mainstream organizations to be open for having people from diverse backgrounds on their projects, people with a disability, etc., people with special needs. Yeah. Um, so it is possible to upskill yourself. There's uh, loads of uh, possibilities around. Uh, the colleagues already mentioned all the training opportunities. You can find it in the, the SALPO training calendar. You could also team up with uh, experienced organizations, uh, etc. And there's money available to do your own thing. So just create your own training course, for example, on it. A second part is about transparent selection and outreach. It is not only about the best young people. Yeah? So sometimes in schools, only the best they get to go on an exchange or on an Erasmus. Um, I hope in the youth sector, I, I, from the feeling I had in many of our discussions uh, this week, most of you uh, would not uh, go down that uh, road that only the best can go, uh, but you do extra efforts to outreach to the other people. You don't only pick the low hanging fruit, but you work with uh, the young people that really uh, could benefit from these uh, programs. Um, Preparation and support is vital, especially when it comes to inclusion and diversity. I heard many examples of how you are doing that uh, during this week, but it should go through all project stages, yeah, from uh, preparing to go abroad uh, or preparing to receive a, a foreign group uh, during the project, very important uh, to have all the safeguarding measures and, and uh, support measures, but then also after project is not the end. Yeah? And then last but not least, a project is not an island either. Um, within your projects, we always hope that you spread it out as much as possible. Of course, there are the lucky ones that can really go on this project and be intensely included. But there's many opportunities as well to link it into the community around it to have even more impact. So with your same project, you can reach so much more for inclusion and diversity for the target groups we're uh, working with. Voilà. So that's a little request or suggestions to the NGOs who are present here, all the youth workers. But we don't leave it all to you. Um, also from our side, from the National Agency side, from the, the SALTO side, uh, we are going to take some action. Um, it starts with information and uh, awareness. So we will try to communicate as, as well as possible, as adapted as possible to get new uh, fresh blood on board yeah we heard from uh, andreas rosellen in the first day that there's still 37 percent who we could easily reach except they don't know about it so there's some uh, work for us to do also the national agencies normally will develop their inclusion and diversity strategy it's also good to uh, promote this to the world so that you know in your country what are the specific uh, things your national agency is focusing on and then, of course, you can create connections in, uh, in order to make it happen. Also, within the strategic partnership on inclusion, yeah, we work on those three plus one, three specific uh, target groups. So that's also good to know where you could uh, link more easily. Uh, because then if you're within the priorities, then you could get a supportive approach whether that is uh, more intense contact with your uh, national agency, whether the national agency provides for coaching to come to a project, project application, hopefully successful one. Uh, yeah, different possibilities are uh, there. Um, also know <clears throat> that every national agency normally uh, appoints an inclusion and diversity officer. And it's a pleasure to see today that there are uh, many inclusion and diversity officers there, uh, Mirella, uh, Christine, Nana, um, who else was there, Miruna, uh, etc. So during the week, Helga was there. Um, so get to know these people in your NA because they are your privileged contact. If you want to do something on inclusion and diversity, 
the NAs also want that things happen on inclusion and diversity. So again, you could create uh, the bridge there. Voila, as we said, we will create opportunities for training and networking um, for you, uh, for NGOs, but also internally for staff. Yeah, all the people that have to manage and implement these programs, they preferably also um, have this uh, finger spits in the field, this, this, little, this little feeling about yeah, what, what, what is inclusion diversity? Why is it so important? How can we leverage it? Yeah. Uh, so there's also um, um, activities for our NA colleagues, but also for the assessors uh, that need to um, uh, evaluate your uh, projects, etc. And then last but not least, uh, monitoring and reporting. If we're doing things well, we should talk about it. So we should uh, um, uh, measure it and let the world know that, yes, we are actually uh, doing uh, good things. That's all I wanted to say about the, the bigger picture a little bit and all the actions that are there to support you. If you want to have a closer look at this uh, inclusion and diversity strategy, it's on our uh, website. It's currently translated already in the 22 official EU languages. And normally after the weekend, um, we will launch a little uh, digestible uh, leaflet about it and a video clip that you can then share uh, with everybody uh, that you think is interested in this topic.